In this episode, Dr. Lara Setti joins us to speak about health literacy. Hi, my name is Lara Setti, and I'm a family physician in community and public health. I work in Great Barrington, Massachusetts at Community Health Programs, where I've been for the past 12 years. I'd like to talk with you today about health literacy. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services defines health literacy this way. Health literacy is the degree to which individuals have the capacity to obtain process and understand health information needed to make appropriate health decisions. Although healthcare literacy affects different people at different times in their life actually, there are some groups that have greater health disparities as I mentioned earlier and as a consequence will have a higher risk of suffering from poor health outcomes. This is quite closely linked to limited health literacy. So these groups include, I'm gonna share my list with you, uh, adults over the age of 65, racial and ethnic groups other than white, recent refugees and immigrants, uh, patients who have less than a high school degree or a GED, people living with poverty, and non-native English speakers. So the cost of this to the individual is unimaginable, but the cost to society is also extraordinary. The annual cost in US dollars to the United States of low healthcare literacy is estimated to be over $200 billion a year. That's really remarkable. So it is important both on the individual, the community, and the larger society level that we address, address health literacy um, as, a, as a nation. So now that we've talked about health literacy and why it matters, I'd like to take a minute to talk about how both patients and clinicians can improve health literacy and improve healthcare outcomes for all. The first thing is do your homework. If you have a list of concerns or questions, try to write them down and bring them with you to your visit. Another idea is to bring a list of medications, vitamins, supplements that you might have that really improves the clinician's ability to assess you and offer appropriate treatments. Sometimes when we're kind of nervous and anxious in a medical visit, another person with us can be that calm voice in the room to say, wait a minute, but can you explain that one more time? And they can even take notes for you so that if you forget something, you can look back on it later. Ask questions, please ask questions. There's no such thing as a silly question. And if you need more information to review in your own time, ask your clinician to provide you with handouts or pamphlets or even um, video links if you're more comfortable with, with media options. For patients, learning to advocate for yourself is crucial, not only for improving your healthcare outcomes, but actually for improving the care that your clinician provides to the next patient and the patient after that, which improves our healthcare system overall. There are a few things that we can do as clinicians to help improve the healthcare experience for all of our patients. One of those things is use plain language. Instead of saying something is adverse, we could say it's bad. Ask the patient to tell you back what you said in their own words. It's called the teach back method. But in this way, we can be sure that the patient did or didn't understand what we said. And then it offers us the opportunity to clarify what we didn't explain adequately. And then focus the message. We really, as clinicians, need to not overwhelm the patient with data or information. Studies have shown that we can, as patients, absorb no more than three pieces of information. So as clinicians, we need to pick the top three points. The what, is, what are the most important things to convey? A number of studies have shown that the most appropriate uh, handouts for patients are largely pictorial, and that is regardless of the patient's literacy or health literacy level. It's our responsibility to empower our patients, to take responsibility for their role as patient and as our partner in their healthcare. This pandemic brings to the fore the reality that we are not an island, that we are interdependent on other nations of the world, and that the information that we have, we need to share. And there must be a vital and vibrant World Health Organization to play that role of uniting us 
as a planet. Because if we just individually as countries or peoples only look internally, uh, we will never obtain mastery over an infection that so rapidly spreads with such deadly outcome. As we learn about this COVID-19 epidemic, it is so crucial to be conscious of how we do that in our community, of talking with our friends and family, talking with our healthcare clinicians. And I think that we can take our personal protection um, very intimately in our home. You know, we can wash our hands, keep our homes clean, wear a mask when we go out. Um, we can protect our community by doing those same actions. Um, but also I think we need to talk to each other and find new ways to socially connect with each other when we're physically distancing. I've also been in the position as a um, family member to a patient. Um, as my dad went unfortunately into the hospital for an unrelated reason um, three weeks ago and got COVID while he was in hospital and um, sadly died two weeks later um, during a time when none of us could see him, none of us could touch him, none of us could hold his hand or tell him that we loved him. So I hope that other people in the community can continue to reach out um, even while staying in. So overall, I hope I've given you a picture about what health literacy is, how it impacts our daily healthcare system as it stands, hopefully how we could improve it in the future, both from a patient and a provider perspective for the benefit of our entire community. Thank you so much.